Welcome to X-Men Evolution episode 36 on Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men animated recap podcast. I'm JC, and I'm still relearning how to do the intros on the show now that we're back into a regularly scheduled episodic show and not doing interviews and stuff. Right, yeah, and I'm Rod, and I'm trying to remember what happened in the last three seasons of the show, <laughs> two, two and a half seasons of the show, mm-hmm. <laughs> but luckily the show does a lot of recaps. Yeah, they, they, they do pretty good for giving you references where needed. I, yeah. I will absolutely give them that. And I guess uh, we have to chalk that up to like this was a weekly show mm-hmm. and we didn't have TiVo quite yet, right? And No, not or, in 2002, no. And definitely not streaming. So, But Cyclops is Waiting for Me is our weekly podcast series where we're going back and watching every single X-Men anime episode we can find. This podcast started with the original 1992 X-Men the animated series, building up to the release of X-Men 97. Somehow that's in our rear view now and we have quite a while for the the next season to come out who knows maybe we're gonna get big news at d23 which is happening sometime around when this episode airs for us i know people that know the show who don't know how the show schedule is i think that's the most like loose way to say it so if there's an announcement it's purely speculative (laughs) <laughs> but like animation takes a long time folks even yeah. without like knowing anything we just put it this way like when the show came out even though the script was written everybody knows that season two script was written but like they still have to like make stuff like animatics and schedule there's a lot of stuff that happens in making anything in hollywood and so it's it's not going to be in the near future put it that way <laughs> yeah there were a few people i remember seeing online of like oh do you think we'll get it by december and i'm like no no literally, literally zero chance of december sorry if, guys. if we get in december disney has fully embraced ai filmmaking that's the only yeah. way we get it that way <laughs> it's literally robot it's it's seven thousand robot animators working 24 hours a day <laughs> right so along the way we've launched a companion show called the xavier files with interviews of members of the x-men community including the voice actors from the series highly recommend you go listen to those those are they're really fun we had some more probably coming up soon we just gotta schedule them mm-hmm. and since season two oh and i just mentioned this since season two of x-men 97 is now a ways off but we're back to the second half of our very first watch through of x-men evolution and is no shade on x-men evolution but man like what a vibe shift from such a 97 <laughs> The last, the last thing I'll say in this intro about X-Men 97 is make sure to look into the description of this podcast because they are doing the making of book for X-Men 97, similar to the ones that the Lee Wolds partnered with Larry Eusen on for the original 92 animated series. We have a pre-order link. It doesn't ship until April. So that gives you a lot of time to pre-order it. Yeah. And I, <laughs> use our affiliate link. The extra motivation to click on it. Uh, if you click on it and you get it soon enough, because I don't know if they fixed this yet, the image for the book, for the authors, there's one author at the beginning. There's three author spots. The first one is a name. The second and the third one literally just say first name, last name, first name, last name. I did see that. So that's fun. If you just want to see that, you can just click on our thing and then see that. And then go ahead and do the rest of your shopping. <laughs> Some quick reminders. We are a recap show about a series that started over 20 years ago. There are going to be spoilers. If you don't want it spoiled for you, pause the podcast, watch the episode, and then come back. We are currently not sponsored or affiliated with Marvel, Marvel Animation, Disney, or Disney Plus in any way. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Cyclops IWFM Pod on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, X, and Facebook. And of course, make sure to follow us on all your favorite podcast services. Now on to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about season three, episode six, which is titled Extreme Measures. It aired on November 2nd of 2002, currently sits at a 6.8 star <laughs> rating on IMDb. What are you laughing at? I love that it got a lower score than Blind Alley of all episodes. <laughs> to be honest, I totally agree with it getting no, a lower it. score. And we have uh, to, if you're not seeing anything, it's extreme in that like 90s vibe, I guess early 2000s vibe, but the X that like the the X Games or something. This is clearly an X Game parody, right? And there was also at the time a series called Extreme X Men that had the same <laughs> treatment of of the name with with that. I'll, I'll I'll post some pictures of it. I think I've mentioned it in the past. The costume designs just like screamed try hard and like. Was that a book series? Yeah, you would hate what they did to Storm in it. I'm going to guess. I'm, I'm looking it up as we speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the episode kicks off with the worst logo design I've ever seen, which is Spear Sports Industries. And they use the S to be the beginning of the Spear and Sports, which I hate that from a design perspective. Yeah, I thought it was Pear Sports. Yeah, or <laughs> Spear Ports. And then they also have 
Power 8, which is P O W dash capital R and A. And obviously that's a Power 8 parody because they probably still didn't want to like go head to head with like it would have been Red Bull and what was the other one at the time? It was pre it was like pre Monster era. It was like oh, oh god, it was that Mountain Dew rip off. Oh, Surge. Shit. Surge, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and Power 8, the way they spelled it. It was probably the most spot on parody I think I've seen so far in the show because it's POW dash R and then the number eight capital R too. Yeah. So the R is just kind of like a, it just happened, but for them to have the word POW in it mm -hmm. and then to be a contraction of the word that's not a normal spelling. And then the number eight arbitrarily, you know, they're going to have some story marketing story about it. it's like the eighth formula or something. <laughs> it's like V8. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just vegetable juice for seniors. Yeah, it's just vegetable juice. I, I'm looking at this cover of Extreme X Men from a distance. Like when, before, I zoomed in on. I was like, "That's not so bad." But yeah, you're right about Storm. Told you the red like color scheme and she, all that you, shit. She looks like she's wearing Miss Marvel's outfit. It has a weird thing, and I think With that's why if you ever see it. really ugly AI artwork of Storm that has like that vibe to it, I think those mm -hmm. are the reference images that it stole from. So. Gotcha. It's not great. If it's your vibe, I don't want to yuck your yum because it's not like horrific it's just wow that was a lot of choices so we see the morlocks that are coming out of the sewer the one that was most recognizable from that group was callisto and rod we're not gonna play the favorite <laughs> game and the reason for that i was like who's that green dude is that supposed to be bleach and it's not yeah and the group of morlocks they just keep like appearing Mm -hmm. Like throughout the whole episode, not just the yeah, scene. Yeah. It's, it's stuff like it's like it's like oh, I didn't even know that person was there. So um, that character who is I thought was at first the shitty teenage version of Leech mm -hmm. is a character named Lucid, who I was unaware mm -hmm. of before. The black girl who can melt the walls. Her name is Sybil, and then there's the little girl with the giant arms, and her name is Turpit. And from what I gathered, she just like paralyzes makes people people's paralyzed yeah so the one dude was that wasn't beak no that was not beak that's that's who i was saying was not leech yeah. which is lucid yeah that's so funny because i was like oh that must be the beak character there about that you were talking about because nope he has a beak <laughs> nope has nothing to do with beak sorry my one note about this section was the morlocks break into this sports company with i guess not a sports company right it's like a drink yeah it's like but, i mean it's 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 a red bull company yeah the grate from the sewer that they push up is so highly pixelated like it's a different resolution than the rest of the show that must have been their cg element of the episode for them you know like to push up there must have been mm -hmm. some reason they're like well it has to do this 3d thing mm -hmm. so it would just be easier to do it and then like it probably looked fine on broadcast television on crts at the time well yeah it was like what 420i at that yeah. point and everything's blurry right because it's just mm -hmm. the lines and stuff but now we're having like we're looking at through the lens of like hd streaming <laughs> and i'm like i can see each box that mm -hmm. forms that great <laughs> yep and then a guard arrives as they're destroying the plant and the little girl with the giant arms freezes him and before he gets frozen he told people to set the alarm off and then they fuck off and it goes right into the animated intro yeah i my original note was like oh a little girl killed the guard one could only hope right. <laughs> so comes out of the intro you get kind of the assistant ceo conversation we're talking about how they're shut down for the day the guard is no longer paralyzed but essentially like incoherent and the ceo who we find out is named mr spear i think later they actually say his name but he's like no no we don't want to tell the cops about this so it's like oh these people fucked with our our drink that we're still gonna sell yeah and you're cool with it yeah they just don't want the the bad press from like i guess the the competition is happening later that day or the next day yeah that was the next day mm -hmm. it jumps over to the school and you see kids who are cutting a skateboard or poster up and and i was like what the fuck are they doing it was just like really awkward i thought it was the brotherhood guys but it turned out it was just some random bullies mm -hmm. in the school yep the bell rings and then you see scott acting a little bit weird as he's like coming out of a room and you know this show kind of does like we've talked about before that buffy style of storytelling where mm -hmm. it's stuff happens that was sort of in reference to the last episodes but not always one-to-one -one connected so i was like is he like already in like a weird spot with gene or like do other people not know about him and gene so he's like 
trying to avoid like being in front of Kitty or Rogue or something like that. It has nothing to do with that. It, it was a really jarring vibe shift. I'll put it mm-hmm. that way. Like when Scott was sneaking around, I'm like, what is going on? Like, yeah. This is like nothing like we've ever seen before. <laughs> yeah. We realize he's avoiding Kitty in particular. He bumps into Jean. He lets her know why. And then Jean decides to run off too. <laughs> I. I thought that they were going to reveal that Kitty was back into baking again because that's the, everybody's running away from Kitty at school. She's deadly in so many <laughs> ways, Rod. She's actually the most dangerous X Men in this show. That's, that, that's how they should actually end the show. One more episode, they have Kitty poison everyone. <laughs> Just food poisoning takes <laughs> yeah. out the whole team. Everybody except for Wolverine dies. She'll find a way for him too. <laughs> it's actually cement and it just locks his organs in place. Yeah, yeah. Or she finds whatever like the counter to Animanium is or something, or she becomes mm-hmm. Magneto for the day and then does the the pulling from his bones. Mm-hmm. Spike is going into his locker and then almost like if if it was a normal person, they could have gotten killed from like these the spring trap that's like shooting like thumbtacks in his face kind of scenario. Yeah, I I, it, I had to actually rewind that section because I I thought like did I miss him like shooting spikes at the thing? Nope, it's that like, was no. that was where thumbtacks like these these kids are elevating their prank war to dangerous levels. But like I, when I was in school, not me specifically, but I remember it being like a lot more acceptable to do like really dumb dangerous shit. Is mm-hmm. like I remember like one of you know one of the go to pranks you see you see in movies at the time like putting tacks on like a teacher's chair and stuff and like yeah that like draws blood right. <laughs> like, yeah. That's not cool. Mm-hmm. I remember once at our school, someone like removed all the steps from the stairwell from the second to the first floor. And we're like, you, okay, you could do that. <laughs> so they were like those stone slabs, you know? Yeah. So someone took the time, I guess, between, and I don't know how they did it, but like, because the timing wise, they must have had a whole team or something. Yeah, they yeah. removed them. And uh, you just kind of unscrew them or whatever. But mm-hmm. like, it's like, yeah, that's a literal fire hazard. Uh, yeah, if there or, was a fire, people would have had yeah. to jump off of that. Or anything, or like, you know, someone needs their medication in the nurse's station. Is the or somebody water. doesn't pay attention and just walks right, right <laughs> off of it. Because <laughs> kids are absent-minded. <laughs> but yeah, then this random kid who we've never seen before starts talking to him, and he's like kind of like bonding over being picked on. And it's like, yeah, you can't like let him show that it bugs you, or they're going to keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And then he gets a little bit weird where he starts like gushing over Spike's powers. I, I thought that we were going to get some other like surprise mutant reveal, you know? The aura was like almost gave like a fanboyish vibe out too. I could see of, that. Like, was, was it True Blood? They were called like Fang Bangers, where they were like <laughs> the, the girls who like had crushes on vampires kind of vibe. I only watched one episode of True Blood with someone I was seeing at the time. And I was like, you know what? You're cool. I can't watch the show again. And I feel I, like I'm you're not, not this cool. I'm not even saying it's that bad. I'm just saying I'm dropping in the middle of this and I'm not invested in the way you all are because there's so many things when you're not invested in something. Like I'm sure people say this about X-Men too. Like this is too ridiculous at this point. They're wrong. To, <laughs> to have dropped it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I, I saw one friend of a friend on social say like, I've never seen a Deadpool movie, but I'm going to, I'm going to go see the third one now. See my review later. I'm like, don't do that. I mean, go see it. <laughs> But, like, you're in no way you perform allowed to, like, give feedback on this after not seeing the first two movies. <laughs> it's true. Cut outside. Scott and Gene are, like, hiding in the car. They see that Kitty's, like, not anywhere nearby. And then Kurt just, like, straight up teleports onto the hood. His secondary mutant power is cock blocking. I know that that wasn't what was happening, Scott and Gene, but it could have been. Because mm-hmm. they're a couple now and they're in his convertible. That's where we get the reveal that Kitty is looking around because she's got her in her driver's permit and she needs a licensed 18 year old in the car with her for her to drive. So that's where we finally get the age confirmation for yeah. Scott and for Gene being 18 years old. And that Rogue is not yet, right? Yes. So that happens. Scott and Jean drive off. There's a really weird, almost AI style scene, like right there as they drive by the the Bayville High sign. And then there's just gibberish written on the second line of the sign. Oh, I didn't even notice that. It's I looked it up. It's literally like, oh, it's it's placeholder letters essentially it is not a real word it's like a janky lauren lauren ipsum or whatever yeah kind of it's, it's definitely a lauren ipsum scenario but kitty is like sad because she's like oh i guess they didn't see me and <laughs> then she asked rogue when she turns 18 i remember those days though i wouldn't specifically ask friends because i don't think it was i don't know if you could it had to be family or something 
But I remember like bugging my parents, like, you're gonna go to the grocery store? I can drive. And like, we literally walk there every day. Like, you know, like it's just down the block. And like, I wanna drive though. <laughs> yeah. Spike and the kid are, are walking and the, the kid's kind of like, again, fanboying out over Spike and his powers. And then they walk into this group of jocks because the jocks are the stereotypical bullies <laughs> of the, ni- the, the 90s, 2000s. And then the kid gets tough and I actually had to rewind it because I thought he dropped a slur in there. I mean, he had that energy, so you're well, not completely he said, off. Because he says, try it, fat head. Oh, and when I heard it really I quick, thought... I was like, what the fuck? And then I rewound it and looked the captions like, okay, Jesus. Gotcha. Okay. I was yeah, like, I that doesn't that. sound like something that would have gotten by even the censors of the 2000s. Right? Yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> but yeah, he definitely had that energy. And it was just kind of like, yeah, you could try it now. But I got my mutant friend with me. And Spike is like, dude, ew. no. Yeah, no, ew. Because it, 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 like, good on the writers for addressing that directly, like very thinly veiled metaphor for real life stuff. Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, my mutant friend here is like, yep. okay, you can go away now. I'm just going to let you get the shit beat out of you. <laughs> yeah. And Spike is like, yeah, I'm just going to take off. I don't want to, I'm not a part of this. And the bullies <laughs> don't let him. And that's where he over like mutates like he loses control of his power again and like we've seen spike in control of his power where he's just like throwing the spikes but we've talked about it a few times like when was mesmero had mm-hmm. possessed him he like overpowered with the spike armor and stuff like that to a point where you know he had he had lost the sense of control over who he was essentially yeah this this though seemed more like it was more uniform the way he was spiking out, you know, because before mm-hmm. it was just kind of like a porcupine. Mm-hmm. And this is when he had like a spine guard and like almost like a head piece or face piece or something like mm-hmm. coming on in his arms and stuff. Like, okay, something else is happening here. Yep. Kurt is turning the corner with Amanda and then you see or he sees that the arguing has started and he goes in there to get Spike out of that scenario. So, you know, literally like mm-hmm. <laughs> and teleports yep. him out. Back in the mansion, we have Scott and Jean who are with Xavier and Xavier is talking about a very special assignment and Wolverine overhears it because he's talking about how it's dangerous and Wolverine is like geared up. He's like, does it include explosives? Like he's getting a danger boner at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And and Xavier's like, well, hopefully not, but it is possible. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Scott and Jean are like, well, you know, we'll let you do this one. You owe us. (laughs) And then you see the keys and then jump over. Kitty is driving the x van the thing that looks like it should be the punisher's van basically yeah it's like a tank yeah and the only time i think you've seen wolverine scared in the entire series (laughs) is as she's driving towards the gate and he just keeps screaming wait for the gate wait for the gate wait for the gate and then to what you brought up in our last episode with kitty being able to phase something that is electronic and not fuck it up i think when the object like i said is electronic and she phases it as opposed to phasing through it yeah then that prevents the you know the the electrical failure essentially i love this whole thing though with xavier scott gene and logan because that's me Mm -hmm. whenever someone's trying to explain something to me and like i don't want to do it but someone who kind of is annoying to me like doesn't know the full context of the situation like wait why am i not being considered for this i mean like (laughs) you know what so and so does deserve a shot at this and i would just completely throw people under the buses (laughs) Mm -hmm. evan is back at the mansion storm sees him and he's just like no not right now auntie row like he's like i am not doing this right now i get that she's his aunt so they're a lot closer Mm -hmm. i cannot for the life of me imagine slamming the door and of all people storm like not even just with my fandom, any just like, version of Storm. Just, Actually, Halle Berry, you would slam it in her face. Oh yeah, definitely. But I mean, just just like the character, like you know what she can do, right? Mm-hmm. Like I know there's a lot of people there, but like you, you got like a goddess here. He's he's, <laughs> he's probably the only one who could do it, right? <laughs> because it's his aunt. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally the only reason it works. Yeah. Um. But, yeah. Oh, and he's in his room. He's kind of like a reverse Spider-Man discovering his powers, right? He's like retracting all his spikes and stuff, but it's not quite working. Yeah, he's like, he's trying and it's not happening for like a minute. And then like, even once he thinks he's done, the the spinal protection is still there. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. This is like kind of gives me. I mean, I know this is like way before, but it kind of gives me similar stories, like Turning Red, the movie. Oh like, yeah, yeah, where like where she can't control when she's doing the transformation at certain yeah, points. Yeah, she's trying to hide it because once it also another thinly veiled like metaphor for puberty. <laughs> it was essentially what Evan's going through is like mm-hmm. second mu- mutant puberty, right? Like, mm-hmm. or was it? What, what did you say it was in the comics? It was like secondary a, mutation. Yeah, yeah, that happens like later on. Mm-hmm. Or it happens in 97. I guess. Right, with Emma Frost. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we see the aftermath of Kitty's driving, where she has not done a good job of phasing through everything. She has hit a newspaper box, which is lodged into the front of the van, a stop sign, and then a street sign that had... A, I can't read what that word is, but something in 46th Street. She has just literally brought those back to the mansion with them. It, the, in a cut scene there's like police showing up to the x mansion <laughs> and there's literally just evidence sticking out of the front of the car right it's like so, if you look under the car there's a body <laughs> so my tangent for the episode is when i was in college there was a night where certain members of our sophomore class like six incidents happened all on the same night mm-hmm. the final of the six incidents was they were definitely drunk and in their pickup truck they hit the school bookstore. Oh shit! Which was a like like brick staircase out in front of it. Mm-hmm. So they didn't go into the, the the bookstore, but they definitely hit the front of it. Yeah. The reason they got caught was because they drove off with pieces of the bookstore stairs <laughs> still in the front of the pickup truck, <laughs> and it was very easy to spot the car that was both damaged and had bricks still embedded in it. I was hoping you were going to say that there were like textbooks in the grill. No, no, they only hit the staircase the way that the <laughs> yeah, the yeah. building was set up. But no, they, so they literally brought the parts of that yeah. staircase back to the parking lot with them. And not even think about like, maybe we're going to stop in the woods and fish these things out or something. Or, or, or even just throw them 50 feet away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they were just like, ah, we're good. Go Penn State. <laughs> it's college just for learning, right? <laughs> All kinds of lessons. Not, not that campus. <laughs> and Logan is not happy. Yeah, he, what, he he threw the keys back at Xavier, and he was like, "Gene has got a right. I do owe them." I was like, mm-hmm. "Are you gonna go kill?" Like, I don't like. I, I know what you mean, but I don't know what you mean. <laughs> He's gonna stab Scott, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, you know, I guess like knowing what Logan does at that school, he pro- that probably means like extra like physical conditioning drills in the morning or something right like more yeah. more laps yeah he could taskmaster them kind of yeah. stuff okay. <laughs> yeah i love it immediately jumps to scott and gene still trying to avoid kitty because she's just going to literally take every chance she gets and gene just goes it's either you or me and it's not going to be me and she telekinetically throws him through the door yeah my note here was gene pretty much literally throws scott under the bus uh-huh. <laughs> just they they're just really lucky they don't have a bus at the yeah. at the institute and then we see evan drinking milk because he's you know shooting a lot of bone spurs out apparently out of that weird milk jug <laughs> your favorite <laughs> i'm still not gonna let that go because now it's a ma- it's like a reoccurring thing mm-hmm. like they're actively using it's not just like a one time like that would be easy to draw and then we get of all the characters to get more lines, Berserker being one is still the weirdest thing to me. Because I don't know what it is about this character. They've never given us a reason to care about him. But mm-hmm. he talks like the most out of the new mutants. Yeah, yeah, the non-main cast. Outside of Bobby, he talks the most. Yeah. Because uh, he's... Did he notice the hand thing? I think he could have seen it, but he didn't. And okay. like Spike like hides his hand from him on it. Mm-hmm. So Spike's gonna have, just have to be like in like full sweats and right? hoodies, hoodies and yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then Berserker is like, "Oh, aren't you late for that the Power Eight skate thingy?" And Spike apparently forgot what time this started. Right, or that was that day, I guess. Mm-hmm. But like, he's like, "Luckily, we live in the universe where a uh, Raven can fly from Nevada to New York to Mexico in twenty minutes, so yep. I'll be fine." We get to this big skate park event, which, like you said earlier, looks very much like an ESPN, like X Games kind mm-hmm. of setup. Really quickly, when you see Callisto under the bleachers. For a quick second, I thought that was Gambit. Like, just really note. quickly, the the shadow, I was like, "Is what the fuck is he? Oh, that's Callisto. My note was Gambit's under the bleachers. And then the next line, oops, that's Callisto. Yeah, because <laughs> the shape of Callisto with the hair 
and the fuckboy gambit design look very similar from a silhouette perspective. Yeah, I think between that and then she was also wearing the, the trench, trench coat. coat. Mm-hmm. I think the trench coat like put it over the edge. Was yeah. That, yeah, you're just used to his haircut mm-hmm. kind of around. Yeah, that, now with like the shitty bowl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That punker ducky will defend to her dying day. Oh, uh, <laughs> the, the amount of DMs going back and forth. And now I just like, there was a post that was all the versions of Gambit in animated or live action. And of course it had the the Wolverine Origins version in mm-hmm. there. And I was like, well, at least Fuckboy Gambit's not the worst. And she's like, you watch your mouth. <laughs> If you haven't listened to the episode with Punker Ducky, who is our shit posting meme lord in the X Men ninety seven community, I have so. seen her cut off the Gambit appear a lot more recently. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah, now that we're looking for it after the interview, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, and, and sometimes they're not even really memes; they're just spiteful. <laughs> She's Which like is okay. the perfect meme. Yeah, no, I, I could I could tell like someone made the wrong comment. She's like, "Fuck you!" in the post. <laughs> <laughs> not even subtle about it. It's great. So in the stands. I love that Spike was going to be late for this, but you have Bobby, Multiple, right. Storm, Berserker are all like in the stands. And, oh, and Kurt all ready to like support him and watch. So it's like Spike had like, not only was this planned for him to be a part of it, like he had people coming to watch him and he or, still forgot about it. Let's write a cannon. That combination of mutants are how he got there on time. That's probably very <laughs> accurate. Mostly Storm. Yeah, Storm flew him, Kurt teleported him some distance. I don't know. I, I, I no. can't do, somebody do the math. And then you see the thing that only happens in Tony Hawk Pro Skater video games, where all these like teenage kids start doing the most unrealistic like <laughs> tricks all at the same time, like crisscrossing on the skate park together. Yeah. Because nope. every real life video of skate parks I've ever seen, it's one kid doing a thing at a time and all the other ones stand on the outside and watch. If this scene were like part of a live action version of this movie, it would all cut to like 30 year old stunt doubles. I guess 30 might be too old for skating those stunts. My knees wouldn't work like <laughs> mid 20s. Like, <laughs> yeah, it would be like watching the the some of the fight scenes from the Power Rangers when it would swap between the actors versus their stunt doubles kind of scenario. Yeah, when the yellow ranger changes genders. <laughs> yeah, the body shape is not the same. Yep. At one point, you get the the shot of Evan grabbing the Power 8 and is drinking, or about to drink it, and Callisto walks by and, like, under a hushed breath says poison to him. Yeah. And, like, it, you know, she it bumps him to him. Later, and I'm just going to address this right now, because obviously, if you haven't watched it, we're not going in exact order on shit, so we could, like, jump around if needed. She's like, I told you it was poison. I was like, he probably just thought you were a psychopath. Like, why would he think to... St- like that the weird person saying poison meant not to drink this shit see and maybe this is just me immigrant kid stuff whatever you want to chalk it up to i'll refer back to the last episode when i talked about scott not opening his eyes at the hospital i would have been the guy that some stranger ran next to me and said not to drink something because it was poison and knocked out my hands be like you know what it probably was nothing but i'm not gonna be the one to find out (laughs) and evan doesn't give a fuck yeah Um, the only reason he didn't drink it is because he was on the ground yeah and then at that point, Berserker sees it and actually clocks Callisto. Yeah, starts following Callisto, like walking Just, around. Yeah, seeing where she's going. So one of the other kids who I don't think it was supposed to be the same kid that he was having like the weird mutant fanboy moment with mm-hmm. is one of the other skaters. Like they were like kind of drawn similar, but I didn't clock it as the same kid. No, yeah, especially because the other kid is supposed to be like helpless and nerdy. He wouldn't be like a skating champion, right? And like- then get really cocky with it either. But apparently the other kids all start having like their little bit of mess ups and Evan is just like doing great, but he's doing great off camera. Like they cut to a shot of the announcers who (laughs) like played enough Tony Hawk that I know most of the basic trick names in skateboarding. And he just started saying a bunch of shit. It was like watching like dodgeball and the Mm -hmm. commentators on that, like where they're just making up crap at that point. Or it's like, I only noticed this because Drew Gooden posted a video about this with Danny Gonzalez, where when you're, whenever you're watching like a low budget movie that features some sort of esports team or video games, they're not, they never speak in a consistent language in a specific game. The writers are just throwing jargon, like random video game jargon around. And if you try to piece it together, it's like, this game makes no sense. Like, oh God, <laughs> I, I have a story about that that's under NDA that I wish okay. I could talk about one day. But apparently Evan is kicking ass and then the kid just straight up accuses, accuses him of cheating because he's a mutant. And 
the the guy who's in charge of the competition is like oh then i best i i should talk to the judges and evan's like you know what fuck you i don't even want it because i know what's going to be said he said i know where it's going yeah that also like we're recording this while the olympics are happening it's yeah. so, like, very similar like not much has changed right <laughs> from the time it's like or i could just be here on my own merit right like that could be a thing yeah i actually mm-hmm. am qualified because my ability is to shoot spiky things and unless i right. build a ramp out of spikes it does <laughs> not affect my fucking tricks so that would have been a great cutaway like you cheated how and you just see a bunch of like spikes with a spike ramp <laughs> just spike over. ramps yeah. added. <laughs> that's or why they builds, cut away he builds his own grind rail out of yeah. spikes and that's why they cut away while the announcers were talking Th- this but part that would have been a great fucking reveal dude right <laughs> that, i actually would have loved that this part of the story went a different direction than i thought it was going to because when the kids start messing up i guess just because they showed so many mess ups in a row to me, it seemed like they were all just like failing. So I thought that was the poison drink. Was like any kid who drank the drink mm, was starting that to it was like poison for everybody, kind of becoming scenario. weak or something like that. And then because he was the one that didn't drink it, like he was still skating all right. But that's like, oh, oh no, he really. They're just trying to show everyone, like, or show us that, like, no, he's just on top of separate from being a mutant, just like a level, you know, champion. Yes, yeah, he's actually an athlete and great at this. Yeah. yeah. Then Evan drinks. Callisto sees it happen and then he gets like blurry eyes basically as that happens the spikes are going through stuff somebody died right <laughs> somebody's dead there's no there's no way that that blast of spikes didn't take somebody out at some point I'm just picturing the first episode with Xavier coming to the football game him coming to the skate park and be like I'm going to erase everyone's mind and there's just like corpses in a corner it's like mm, that, that kid was never born <laughs> You have to erase a lifetime of memories to cover for Evan. <laughs> or no, I, I, I'm just going to imagine like these people like, oh, their memories are wiped. But then the first thing they see when they come to is like dead bodies sitting there. <laughs> what happened? This is so much worse than whatever actually did happen. A, a scoreboard blew up, which a right. uh, scoreboard does start to fall. Storm mm-hmm. and, and Iceman use their, their abilities to stop it. Evan runs off. Callisto follows. A kid is about to die and Nightcrawler catches him, but he does that perfect teleport where people don't see him and just kind of like are like, what the fuck happened kind of moments. Yeah, I guess it's such a commotion. Yep. And then weirdly enough, and this is where it's the suspension of disbelief from this kind of a show, Storm specifically finds one of the bottles of Power 8 like on the ground and is like, hmm, Ah. when it's an event that is sponsored by Power 8. Yeah, yeah. She's like, this is suspicious. It's almost as if this is very prominent at this event. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Evan ends up at the amphitheater that we had seen him have his interactions with Beast when Mm -hmm. they had the big Beast transformation episode. He falls. The creepy girl with the (laughs) arms goes to touch him. And then the character's name, who is phasing through the walls, his name is Facade. Yeah, that was another one that just appeared out of nowhere. We've never previously seen them. If it, candidly, if it wasn't for the wikis, I wouldn't right. have known who those characters were. <laughs> Aside from Callisto, I didn't know the names of any of these characters. Oh, okay. So, and that's not to say they're not references to Morlocks from the books, but also, like, the Morlocks from the books mostly died in the Mutant Massacre, which was, oh, like, no. the 80s or 90s. So uh-huh. Morlocks haven't had a great run in the <laughs> comics, candidly. And they don't in the show so far either. That's true. <laughs> Especially 97. We jump over and we see Kitty in Scott's car. She actually parks, like, does, like, you know, a little bit of a Fast and Furious drift and looks like there's no damage to Scott's prized car, which is nice. Yeah. And she's, um, and she's speeding presu- also a little bit because she got the news about Spike. Yeah, not because she's a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> and she's asking about Evan. Beast and Xavier are testing the Power 8, and they're able to see that there is a reaction present when it's tied to mutant cells, but not when it is next to non-mutant cells. And Xavier Mm -hmm. is obviously very concerned about whatever these toxic elements are. And Storm walks in. She's like, does that mean Evan's poison? She's being a true auntie. Mm -hmm. She's like, we gotta go find him. It's like, yeah, you got a point. (laughs) Down in the Morlock tunnels, we see Caliban, who we saw a couple episodes prior, who had mm-hmm. the interaction with the m- new mutant kids when everybody was on the run, and basically saying, you know, he doesn't trust Evan, and wherever he goes, the X Men are going to be sure to follow, kind of scenario. Yeah, which is a good point. Mm-hmm. Like, you just gave them a reason to come down here. Mm-hmm. And then Callisto kind of explains who the Morlocks are to Evan. I guess we assume that the new mutants kids didn't really give that explanation because Evan's kind of given the vibe of learning this all for the first time yeah or the very um, least like 
it was a passing thing in some, one of their lessons. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, there's these people in the sewer. Anyway, moving on. And then the weird part for me still to this day is where Callisto is like, you know, for the mutants who look like us, Callisto like, know, right? is hot. Like, let's just call it out like it is. Like, they're an attractive character. Yes, they have an eye patch, but like modern society, even in the 2000s, you weren't going to be shunned for having an eye patch. So yeah. I don't know if you and Scaleface can necessarily right. <laughs> say that you're you're the same category. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah, it was a weird statement coming from Callisto, especially because I think the besides the eye patch, the only like physical maybe thing that was weird is like they had a like a scar on the other eye or something, which the, it sure. all falls into like yeah, okay, normal. you're you're a biker chick and you got into a fight, like yeah, like yes, you're not, you're not going to get a job as a secretary in a doctor's office in 2002. I'll agree with you on that. You could be a bartender at a fucking biker bar and nobody would think twice in yeah, that scenario, or just live in New York, right? Yeah, is yeah. You live person, in the village. Be a person in New York, and uh, yeah, you compared to who, the what was the one I thought it was Beak Lucid, yeah, Lucid, at, or the you know the gr- the little girl that looks like she has elephantitis in her arms and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's a little bit of difference. Like, I mean, even the other girl, Sybil, like her arm was a little bit longer, but at, like I wouldn't have assumed like that's a mutant. That's just somebody who has long arms, you know. I just imagine like all the rest of the Morlocks talking shit about Callisto constantly because <laughs> she's she's definitely virtue signaling the whole time yeah. where she's like yeah all of us who can't pass on the streets and they're all like <laughs> what the fuck did you just say and Callisto's like my burden is I'm so hot <laughs> <laughs> I'm too hot to be with the normies yeah. <laughs> uh, she's gonna get shanked <laughs> And they reveal that the Power 8 factory is releasing the waste through their tunnels, and that is slowly poisoning the Morlocks because their tunnels are by that runoff, essentially. Mm -hmm. Evan says he wants to help. Caliban specifically says that he feels Berserker is nearby. And then we get kind of like, you know, this Callisto's power reveal, because I don't think we ever actually got that in either 92 92. or 97 and then callisto can see in the dark apparently as part of her power set yeah i was wondering what that was i didn't know if that was that or like night night vision or like a radar thing or something i mean i I, yes she does not have the goggles from jurassic park so i'm assuming that's her power (laughs) and then she calls berserker ray which is the first time that's been addressed in the entire show what his first name is so Maybe this is from not having watched the show in four months. Did Berserker ever... Was this the reveal that Berserker had a connection to the Morlocks? Berserker was in the the group that I think met up with the... Like, the New Mutants in in Uh, Caliban. Okay, now I'm remembering. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. But the little girl paralyzes him. Yep. Go back to Spear Industries. Not Leech sees through the wall. Sybil (laughs) melts through the wall. Evan goes in, takes out the cameras, and then they, they're they like, all right, we're going to taint the supply, which I'm not going to lie. As soon as they're like, we're going to taint the supply, I was like, that dude's still going to sell everything in that. That right. does not matter. He does not give a shit. And we find out later that he didn't necessarily know that it was detrimental to mutants specifically at the time. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he, even if they neutralized it, like I think that's what they said. They were putting something in it to like make it ineffective for the poison part. He's been, yeah, it would have made no difference to the, the guy be like, yeah, so, yeah, just ship it, right? It looks I right. I mean, there aren't there all those, like, awful studies that are like, oh, this manufactured food product has this many parts of cockroach in it. It's like, well, as long as we could test it and it doesn't murder a person, we're still going to sell it to you, you know? And even if it does, it'll be months before anybody finds out. And then they could say that there were terrorists who attacked <laughs> the plant and blame yeah. it on the mutants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Back in the sewers... You get the moment where Berserker and Scaleface have their little confrontation. It's like, you know me. And then he is able to escape pretty easily, despite still not knowing what his powers are. And he calls the mansion. So he goes to the sewers knowing where Evan is, but doesn't say anything before he goes down into the sewers where... Let's let's be real. Cell phone reception in 2002. You weren't getting reception in the sewers. Yeah. You should have called before you went down into them. Yeah, that was a, it's a Nokia track phone era, especially mm. for teenagers. But then, right. once again, teenagers, it's an adventure. <laughs> security arrives. They start tasing the little girl. Yep, that was my nose. Like, did security kill a little girl? Is that what I just saw? They intended to. Yeah. And then they have no aim outside of the little girl because nobody else gets tased. But they do hit, like, the electrical box, which starts making shit blow up. Yeah, they destroy their own factories. These, these are, like, stormtroopers who didn't make 
the empire right and then the vats start to like fall over and knock into each other and then instead of running outside they decide to run down into the drains which is where liquid goes going. and they're they're staying ahead of flowing water which is damned impressive because that's not how that works they get to a dead end evan makes a ladder out of spikes just imagine that kid from earlier coming back it's like see this is how he cheated at the the extreme game or the power eight games yep. he made himself a ladder out of spikes to do bigger <laughs> tricks and then scott takes a risk by blasting a hole through the ground which could have absolutely murdered everybody below him he's got a lot more confident after being blind in the desert and shooting in random directions Jean does her telekinetic save and is able to hold the water back or the the power eight back after everybody's able to get up there and then storm just starts making it rain and they're like we're gonna dilute everything yeah sure i'm, I'm not gonna question it i guess she just makes it rain for like three days straight or something is that because they just showed all everything going down the drains and they didn't even show the the water changing color or anything it just kept yep. raining yep and as that's happening evan walks off with the morlocks and then you get beast rogue nightcrawler that are in the x copter for some <laughs> reason they provided literally no value by showing up there for that it's cameos yeah I, I guess it's because storm is about to panic and they're like well we all have to search for him together so put a more x-men at the scene as to where they're searching yeah. for him but i was like they they Okay, I guess we're just showing people's faces at this sure, point. Sure, yeah. Xavier is at Spear Industries, and we get that Spear is basically saying, like, oh, my bad, I didn't know that this was a thing. I wish they had said something, and then we get, again, this, this version of Xavier is very <laughs> understanding for people hating him, and it's like, well, you know, they, they didn't feel like they could go to you. I wish they did, but they don't trust people, and it's like giving these people, right. like, Charles, come on. I guess the closest argument I could have in defense of Charles, not that I'm trying to, because we've already said I don't like the one in the show, is that maybe he's trying to be diplomatic in like not trying to start a fight, but trying to get the person to take the action that he wants them to take, right. regardless of what you know kind of fluffy conversation has to happen around it. I didn't think that that was true what he said until he followed it up like right after Xavier left. He was like his employee was like. What should we do now? He's like, go immediately back into production. He's like, now it's suddenly a lot more valuable. It's like, wait, so you're even more evil than I previously like had. Yeah, like, predicted. you didn't <laughs> make it to be poison, but as soon as you found out that it is poison, you're like, oh, stock just went up. Isn't that kind of the story about mouthwash? Didn't it start as like floor cleaner and then it wasn't selling well? I don't know if this is an urban legend or not, but you all can look it up at home. I, I think I think the, we're not going to do research yeah. for you. So I think the story goes that like it was originally formulated as like floor cleaner wasn't selling well. So someone was like, let's tell people to put it in their mouths. So they don't really need to. But let's tell them their mouths are dirty. And then Listerine started. And then <laughs> alcoholics had green mint to drink. And <laughs> I never understood that. I knew I know people that had done that when it got like eight. I was like, wait, what? I'd rather drink nothing. So that was actually the final scene, but we do get right before that. The X-Men are searching around. They're in the sewers. And Evan and Storm cross paths with each other. And he's like, you know, the spikes aren't going away. I just need a break. And tells his aunt to not follow him. She's like, yeah, A, I'm, I don't want to do that. But B, what the fuck am I supposed to tell your parents? Like, I was literally I, supposed to take care of you. <laughs> I literally lost your son in the sewers. <laughs> Twice. Yeah. And th and that's how this episode ends with Evan just being like, and I'm out. Yeah. And minor spoiler for next episode, don't address it. Nope. Not even, <laughs> not even a little bit. Because <laughs> it's going to be down the road. Like, an episode more than the next one. Yes, because at the time of recording, Rod and I have one more of these to record. And we have not watched beyond that yet. So we don't know what's going on. And that's an interesting concept though about having since evan was always supposed to be kind of like our eyes we saw him go into the x-men and now seeing admittedly seeing him going into the morlocks that's an interesting little twist you know I, i'm gonna guess that means that either they were trying to write evan out of the show for a while for whatever reason or mm -hmm. and once again don't spoil it for us if you've seen it because we have yeah please don't spoil it, it for they're us. either writing him out because they don't want him there for some reason or they're just going to explore the morlocks more and that's just going to be our b story for a number of episodes and that's how evan's going to be the vehicle for that mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah it's interesting because like to your point of like oh he's supposed to be our eyes mm -hmm. i kind of feel like this show doesn't give us in our eyes All right. like, to, <laughs> to an extent evan is the closest to it but it's not like how like jubilee's prominence in that first season of of x-men the animated series like i feel like evan didn't have that that same level of like connect to the audience he was supposed mm -hmm. to be like 
the cool 90s stereotype of what a teenager would be kind of yeah, scenario. Yeah. And definitely yeah. by season three, we lost a lot of that perspective because in earlier seasons, yeah, he was literally vlogging, you know, before vlogging was a thing. So it was mm-hmm. like, oh, we're literally seeing through the lens. Yeah, he was MTV yeah. True Lifing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rod, that's all I got for this show. Any closing thoughts from you? It's It was fine. It was pretty straightforward. I think yeah, it was our takeaway from this. Evans with the Morlocks now and is going through second going se- through second mutant puberty or something. Mm-hmm. And also, thank God for wikis because I thought that was a really shitty version of of Leech. So. Right, and I thought it was Beak. So there we go. Hold, well, now I have to check when was Beak created. Also, Beak's real first name Barnell. I thought you were going to say Rod the Rodney or something. Oh, dude, I wish I <laughs> fucking wish. No, trust me. If 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 it was, I would have known that that was his first name. <laughs> When did Beak debut? Give me a date. Come on. Give me a book and a date, you fuckers. Well, I'll post about it later. Yeah. I can't find it, Rob. <laughs> That's Thank you gonna... guys for joining us. If you have any thoughts, make sure to drop them into the comments for either the YouTube upload or the official Instagram of this post. Or if you are listening to us on Spotify, there are now formally comment sections in Spotify podcast. So you could actually leave comments oh. on the podcast itself there. It's dangerous. And if you like what you heard, yeah, dangerous. Not for us. <laughs> we need more people listening to us. <laughs> We'd appreciate a rating on the podcast app of your choosing. Thank you guys who did it on iTunes. We have a pretty solid rating on iTunes nice. right now. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, not iTunes, iHeartRadio, <laughs> Amazon Music, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, and CastBox. Yeah, we're back in evolution times. 